Welcome to another episode of Racing to Learn. We are a nonprofit that uses radio control to get kids excited about math and science. And today we're doing a little bit of a technology comparison. So I recently got a new piece of hardware here. It's a Microsoft Surface Pro 4. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty heavily decked out. This one's got the i7, the Intel i7 processors. Uh, it's got um, 512 gigabyte SSD hard drive and a uh, and 16 gigabytes of RAM. So uh, just wanted to walk you guys through my, my thought process in selecting this machine. Uh, a lot of uh, the decisions that I have to make uh, in my in my career as well as uh, you know when I'm buying a new piece of equipment or uh, even a new RC uh, you know usually I, I want to do a, a pretty quick comparison um, you know as thorough as I need to go depending on the situation but um, what really helps me make decisions like this uh, even even career decisions is uh, really uh, taking out the emotion out of the decision and quantifying everything and the the way I um, I found that works best for me is a, a Google spreadsheet. Um, so you can also use Microsoft Excel or whatnot. But what I like to do is I like to just kind of um, uh, either, you know, however you want to lay it out, but I, I like to put, um, you know, a, a bunch of criteria, right? Um, so uh, in this case, you know, I'm comparing, I was comparing the MacBook Pro 13 inch uh, and the uh, Surface Pro 4. Um, and uh, putting, you know, essentially my decision criteria down the side over here, and you can flip flop it. Uh, you could have, uh, you know, MacBook Pro here and Surface Pro here along the, um, uh, along the, uh, the uh, vertical axis, and then the the uh, criteria along the uh, the horizontal there. However you want to lay out, however whatever makes most sense to you. Uh, but I, I put my decision criteria. What was important to me? Uh, along the uh, the vertical axis here, right? So iPhone integration efficiency, which I'm I'm calling, uh, you know, how efficient am I at using the uh, the computer itself, right? The operating system, all the applications, etc. Um, USB here. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go through these decision criteria in more detail uh, throughout this episode, but you know, it really helps you see side by side uh, how the how the different options stack up. And then it helps you make a decision, right? You can actually see an older version here. Um, when I was uh, comparing a Lenovo ThinkPad and an HP uh, laptop, right? Um, and uh, you know this was a couple of years ago, so the specs are a little bit older. But really laying it out side by side so that you can make uh, a decision easier, right? So first, what I went you know, when I had to make this decision, this decision, what I did is I, I went up to Facebook, I, I posted. Um, a message to all my friends. I said, hey, what do you guys think of these choices? And I got a lot of interesting feedback. Um, it actually ended up being pretty close. I, I, I thought people were going to sway more heavily toward the, the MacBook Pro, and this is the new 13-inch. Um, I've got an old Air here sitting right here, and I've actually wiped it, um, getting ready to, to send it back. Um, but that was a decision that I had to make a couple months earlier as well. Hey, um, you know, which, which Mac do I want to go with, right? Uh, and that was before the new MacBook Pro 13-inch came out. That essentially um, is, you know, is almost the same size as the Air here. Um, and, you know, just a lot more modernized and a lot more powerful. Um, but, um, you know, I, I was, yeah, I was, I was thinking that, you know, hey, on Facebook, a lot of people would have probably went uh, with a MacBook Pro, right? A lot of my friends um, who are, especially in technology, you know, they, they'd switch to the Mac side. But I was I was pleasantly surprised, or I, I shouldn't say pleasantly, I was surprised to hear that actually a lot of people recommended the Surface Pro. So I didn't know how prevalent these were. Um, so, you know, I decided to stack up the decision criteria, right? A success criteria, whatever you want to call it, along that vertical axis. And for me, what was important to me uh, were, were these things, right? So the first one is iPhone integration. Clearly, you know, the Mac does a better job of that. Um, although recently it's been a little bit waning. Um, I, you know, a couple months ago I could send texts through iMessage on my Mac and suddenly that's just stopped working for me. Um, you know, uh, other bugs as well. I mean, that, that was probably the biggest one. Um, just, uh, not being able to type out text messages anymore. 
um, on my Mac, I, I, being only limited to iMessages. But you know, I, I'd still give it a one because you know most uh, most of the folks that I communicate with via text, they do have iMessage, so not a huge deal. You know, it's it's probably about I don't know sixty forty or whatnot. Sixty percent of them. Uh, do use iPhones and iMessage or whatnot. Um, so I still gave it a one over there. And then under efficiency, I had to hand it to the, the Service Pro um, just because all the, you know, all the shortcuts and whatnot, um, I'm, I'm just more used to on a PC. Um, I've used this Mac for the last year, but I, I just don't like those multi-fingered um, shortcuts, you know, like to take a screenshot, I have to, you know, press four buttons, right? Um, not only is it just ergonomically poor, it, they're hard to remember those complicated shortcuts. So, uh, you know, of course, if you've been working on the Mac for a long time and you're used to those things, uh, you know, you the efficiency one would, you know, is probably dependent on user, right? But I gave the, uh, the um, Surface Pro the win there in terms of efficiency, I gave it a one. Um, the USB situation, so, you know, both of these systems have USB, of course, uh, but the new MacBook Pro only has um, USB-C ports, right? And that, uh, you know, right now, um, as of February, uh, 2017, not a lot of peripherals are USB-C yet. Most stuff is still your classic, uh, USB, right? 3.0, 2.0, etc. Most of these are, are 3.0 by, by de facto, unless you have an older computer. Um, so I, I gave that one to the Surface Pro again. It just has a standard USB, um, 3.0 plug over here, right? So uh, it only has one of them, whereas the Mac has three, uh, or you know the MacBook Pro. Um, some of them have two, some have three. The the one with the touch uh, thing over here has three. Um, so I you know I, I just didn't want to have to carry all these different dongles, you know, to adapt from USB C to something else, right? Just another thing that you have to buy. Just another thing that you have to keep track of and hopefully not lose. Um, so I gave the nod to the um, uh, to the uh, to the Surface Pro again. Um, just the ability to convert to a tablet as well. I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the iPad. Um, love my iPad, um, but uh, you know, just being able to tear off this this keyboard here, right, and be able to transform it into a tablet. So you know, you could see how low profile this is. I've got the standout, but um, you know, this is pretty much. Um, rather than having, you know, two separate devices, uh, an iPad, um, and, you know, a laptop or whatnot, you can have just one device handle them both, uh, or handle both of those, um, those things. So, you know, really looking forward to exploring the, the tablet mode on here. Of course, it's got the touch screen as well, whereas the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro do not, right? You'd have to go with an iPad Pro, to get that touch screen. And then you still wouldn't be able to run your, you know, your, most of your stuff um, on I iOS, right? I, I shouldn't say most of your stuff because it depends on what you run, but um, you know, you wouldn't be able to run uh, your, your desktop apps there um, on, uh, let me just get rid of this here. What's going on? Uh, you wouldn't be able to run your desktop apps on, on an iPad Pro, right? So definitely a limitation for me. Um, reliability here, right? This one's a little bit, you know, I, I, I don't, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, Surface Book Pro is an unknown, uh, to me in terms of reliability. Of course, I know I can always count on my, uh, on a Mac, right? Um, I put the battery life down here next, right? Uh, nine to 10 hours on that MacBook Pro 13, the new one versus six to seven on the Surface Book Pro or Surface Pro, sorry, not the Surface Book Pro. Um, so, you know, the, the, the advantage is definitely, uh, toward the MacBook there. So I gave it a one, um, you can get the surface book pro, right? Which has an extra battery integrated into the keyboard. Um, uh, but that just wasn't an option for me. Um, so, you know, I, there, there, there are other keyboards that I've been recommended, uh, for this, uh, that, that kind of turn this into a, a pseudo, um, surface book pro, right? Just a better keyboard. I, I haven't been a huge fan of this, this keyboard yet. Just taking some adjusting to it taking some getting used to. Um, so that's why I also gave the MacBook Pro the, the one for the, the keyboard as well. Um, so, you know, when you tally these things up in this cell here, I, I just summed everything, right? Um, the, the MacBook Pro actually got a four, whereas the, the Surface Book got a three, but you know, it's, it's pretty neck and neck, right? Um, 
So you could change these numbers too, you know, to quantify how important to, it is to you. You know, if you want to do it on a scale of one to five or one to 10 or whatnot, right? Whatever you want to use. But the whole thing here is that when you add everything up, right, it gives you a quantifiable measure of uh, your options, right? In this case, it was pretty close. I would pretty much call it dead even. Um, what, you know, I, I guess the, the, the non-tangibles that it didn't put on here that, uh, that finally sealed the deal um, were uh, the USB-C, that would have been a really big pain, right, for me to carry around all these adapters that I could possibly lose. Uh, and um, the the tablet, right, uh, being able to transform this into a tablet, not having to have two devices, uh, right, a separate laptop and a separate tablet, just having one to, um, to handle both of those capabilities. So anyways, hopefully this helped you guys. Uh, you know, this is how I make a lot of my decisions, uh, even regarding ICs, right? When I compared, um, you know, like when I was thinking about getting the XXL2E versus, um, I, I think it was the, uh, I forgot what I was, uh, the, the Sen Colossus GSTE or whatnot, right? Um, even comparing a lot of those or even buying parts, right? Which, which upgrades should I use? Um, you know, quantifying the decision on a spreadsheet uh, really helps you make a data-driven decision versus uh, possibly, you know, just a, an off-the-cuff or an emotional decision. So thanks again for watching. Hopefully this helps you guys in making your own decisions. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if this is helpful to you guys, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks.